Hey everyone, I think that we should be streaming to YouTube. Definitely pop in the chat, let us know you see us all right, and we'll get started in a couple minutes when uh, people start flowing in. But I'm super excited to have you on the show today, Micah. This is like, I feel like a long time coming. We've been chatting <laughs> for a while and have your connections to Chicago, which is cool. So thank you for coming on. No, no, uh, yeah. A lot of connections to Chicago. It seems like a lifetime ago, but uh, a lot of good memories there, and they always show me love. Art world, baseball world. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of love for the shy. Um, cool. I see us here on YouTube. All right, awesome. I always like to make sure, especially I just switched platforms. I did a stream earlier today, so it's nice to nice oh, no. to see everyone here. Hey, GT. Thanks for popping in the chat. Um. So I'm just going to wait for a few more people to come in here. I see people coming in now, but um, I'm super excited to have this stream, especially because this right now it's 11 p.m. Eastern time, which means there's one more hour for your auction, uh, which has already been like insanely exciting and just so beautiful to see what's going on. Um, so we'll get into all of that and we'll, and we'll talk about the auction, we'll talk about the piece um, and what you're doing there. But I guess before that, we'll start with a few soft questions while people are still coming in. Um, for those of us or for those of people watching that don't necessarily know, I, I'd love for you to share a little bit about, um, I mean, obviously you're, you're so multi-talented, you're an athlete. You're also an artist. You you have all of these different things that we've chatted about privately. But if you would want to share a little bit about um, why you started creating art and what connection you've you've had to this sort of creative path um, along the way in in your other career as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, it's like a, it's like a a pleasure to be on here. It's like being on like, today's show. Like you're like the legend. <laughs> um, Thank you. For, for me, um, creating art started in 2016. Up to that point, uh, I was strictly baseball. Like, that was it. So I was three. Um, and it just was a happenstance, really. Um, I got traded to the Dodgers. And uh, obviously, that's my first time. That was my first time in LA when I got traded over there. And um, I came from the Chicago, the White Sox. And uh, when I got to LA, there was a lot of famous people around and there was a lot of like cameras around. And I got real nervous uh, when I got called up in front of the team to introduce myself and, you know, new guy. And I didn't want to play the piano in front of the team or say I played piano. Uh, mm. I, I feared that the manager was going to make me play piano in front of the team. And I was like, nah, they're going to think I'm lame. Uh, and right before that, I, I did like a paint and sip class, you know, like they do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was like, okay, that's fresh on my mind. Like, I enjoyed it. Um, so I told him, he's like, what do you like to do? And I said, I, I like to paint. Thinking, like, nothing's going to come up that, you know, like, show me your paintings. I don't have any, uh, you know, my phone, whatever. That, that's the end of it. He's like, okay, hey, you're going to make a painting of this guy. And I said, oh, word? Like, <laughs> so, so that's how it started. Like, so the rest of spring training, I worked on a painting of Maury Wills. And... At the end of spring training, um, the new guy, like all these like superstars, like I grew up watching, like I had to present it in front of them. And it was like my first portrait I ever did. And uh, everybody came up to me and was like, yo, this is cool, man. Like you're really talented. And like, I have an image of it and it's like, it's terrible. <laughs> and, uh, oh my gosh. I'm sure it wasn't terrible, but that's- No, it's terrible. Like, it's, it, it's terrible. Um, and a lot of the guys came up to me or like, dude, this is really good, man. Like you got talent and yo, that stuck with me. Mm. And, um, that like word of encouragement that like, even though like they're probably lying, obviously they were lying. Like it was trash. Um, it, it got me here. <laughs> like, like I just thought it was good. So I just faked it. Like I, I not even faked it, but like, I just, I'm good. So I'm gonna keep working at it. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's how I got into art. That's it. Like that simple that's so interesting so that was in what year did you say that was 2016 2016 spring of 2016 okay cool um, i retired in 2018 mm -hmm. um, and 
I decided to leave baseball, not by like choice by any means. Like I love baseball, but um, that spring training, I got traded to Tampa. I got traded a lot. Um, I was expendable, you would say. Um, so they sent me to Tampa and I had a really good spring, best spring of my life. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make the team, you know, all that. Last day of spring training, they called me in and said, uh, we're gonna send you to AAA. And that hurt, that really hurt. Like, and, um, because I knew I outperformed like even my level and mm. from a lot of people. And uh, I saw the team doctor, I said, hey man, I'm, 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 I think I'm like hyperactive, I want some Adderall, right? So I was like trying to get an edge, right? Like get some Adderall, get locked in um, and, and hopefully get called back up. And he ran some tests, talked to me and all that. And they diagnosed me, um, sent me some other doctors and they said I had, uh, bipolar disorder or mm. something um so they gave me this drug called lithium and lithium like uh wasn't for me so like it numbed me like completely numbed me for a whole year so my last year of baseball i don't really remember because i was just like a zombie and it was That's miserable so- do art like at the end of that year i was like i can't do this anymore i don't want to take this medicine like i, I just want to art is like my escape so that's what i'm going to do yeah it's so interesting that you say that because there's such a, um, I personally within not myself, but my family have dealt with just like family members coping with different, um, things that they deal with medically and different medications and stuff. And, and you're totally, it, it just, what you just said hit a chord because there are some medications that absolutely help people. Um, with what they're dealing with and then there are others that are totally not for them and and make like you said make people numb to other things which is a dangerous sort of thing to start rolling into so that's also I think in a way could possibly have been a blessing for you to know that and to be able to say this is not for me and to go on this creative path and almost find different ways to cope and deal with what you were dealing with. Do you feel like that was sort of what happened? Yeah, I mean, um, I think that everything happens for a reason, obviously. Yeah. Um, and at that time, baseball was my life. Like, imagine doing something. I was 20, uh, how old was I? 27 when I retired. Mm. So for 24 years of my life, from three to 27, all I knew was baseball. Like at five years old, I could recite the whole like Chicago Cubs starting lineup. Like not even yeah. lineup, like the bench players, like everybody. So like for 24 years, I was obsessed with baseball. Like to a point where like even in college at like 3 a.m., I would go to the batting cage like in the, in the gym, like freezing, walk in the snow and go hit for hours by wow. myself because I was obsessed with baseball. And so at 27, I said, I'm done. Like that was hard at the time because- Oh, absolutely. I didn't, I never have filled out a resume. I never had a job interview. I never graduated college. So like I had no skill sets whatsoever. I just knew how to play baseball. And because when I was three, I said, I wanted to play major league baseball. And I never wavered from that. So now I'm 27 years old, I'm on this drug called lithium and then I'm, I'm, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. We had we had a, uh, a baby on the way, right? So I had no idea what I was going to do when I retired. It was really kind of like frightening. Like looking back on it, everything happens for a reason, all that. But at the time, it's like, yo, this is terrifying. And this is kind of like, you know, it's really miserable. Like, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like yeah. I'm still creating art, but like not on that level. Like I was still like kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to say in my art what I wanted to convey and all that and nothing was coming. It was just like, yo, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't imagine having in some way, sure you, there was something you were passionate about that you could pick up, but at the same time, it wasn't necessarily initially by choice that you had to make that career switch like that. So that is, I mean, that's, that's so difficult to deal with, but at the same time, um, I mean, I'm really happy you came into the space and I already see you're doing so many freaking amazing things and you have so much talent. So it's crazy and and 
kind of cool to hear that in 2016. You're like, I did this piece and it was terrible. And then, you know, years later, 2020, we're here and and you're creating really amazing, beautiful works with so much more than just putting talent on on the paper and on the canvas. You're putting so much meaning and so much life into your artwork, which I really connect with. And when I saw your first pieces on Super Rare, I DM'd you and I was like, I was like, I, I feel something when I look at your art and it's super important to have that um, and and just to give sort of more than just a visual, you know, wonder for people to look at. So I really appreciate that in your work. Um, I'm interested, how did you, when did you figure out what NFTs were in this whole, whole sort of like crypto world? What brought you into this space? Um, what brought me into it? I don't know. Just like everybody else, right? Like you hear about Bitcoin, Ethereum, like for me, it was like XRP, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you start just learning more and I, I'm, I'm an inquisitive person. So I'm always trying to learn And Um, then I found super rare and I was like, okay, like I can put some art out in there. And like, really it was like survival mode for me. Like, um, I think it was a year after I retired. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I wasn't putting my art out there because I didn't know uh, what I wanted to convey. So I wasn't putting art out. So I was like, I got to <laughs> buy diapers, you know, I got to figure it out. So I just got into crypto art and, and I quickly realized that digital art and I don't like, I, I don't like calling it crypto art because like that makes it seem like it's different than art. No, it's art. So like, um, I got into like the digital art because, um, and I realized that it was such a welcoming community and a community that was built on like encouraging other people. Right. Yeah. So like, that's how it was. I, I got into like, you know, maybe I can make some money investing in XRP, you know, and then I down a rabbit hole, I found, you know, digital art and, uh, just really started like that was it. And, uh, and people started welcoming me, welcoming me in. And, and um, it kind of changed my life because the community is so welcoming. And I learn a lot. Like, I see your work, right? And I see, okay, this is incredible to see the way you're using technology, but also your fine art background and skill set, right? Okay, I'm taking that. I see what Trevor Jones is doing with his oil and what he's doing with tech. Okay. I'm going to take some of that. And then I see like Hackatow and what they're doing with their, their work and their cleanliness, their professionalism, all that. So I'm seeing all these things and I'm, and I basically was just reaching out and like, you know, like asking questions and like stealing, like taking from what you, whatever you guys were doing and trying to learn. And like, it transformed my career because then in July, I reached out to a gallery in Los Angeles that, you know, inquired about me a couple of years ago, but I wasn't ready. And I said, I'm ready, but it's all because of what you guys did. Like you may not know where like Trevor Jones might not know it or like Hackatow or like X copy or whoever, all these, all these artists, right. That I was just watching, like, like it gave me that like confidence. You guys like kind of like, it was such a welcoming environment. So I reached out to that gallery and I said, look, this is what I'm doing. And even you, you messaged me when I did that like astronaut work and yeah. you're like, Yo, I'm with it. And you put an offer in and I was like, when you put an offer in, I said, okay, I, I'm, I, this is good. Right. Like, because I was watching you and I was like, hey, like she validated me. So I went to them and I said, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, this is my work. This is what my, my the meaning behind it. Like, and they were like, you're ready. And like, I don't know, it changed my life. <laughs> That's really beautiful. I love, I love hearing that. And this, this community, like what you're just saying, I, I hear that echoed with so many different people about how welcoming it is. And, and that is so important to me. And it has been for so long. And I love hearing that, you know, people even still, I mean, you've been in the space for a little bit now, but even still other folks that are still coming in get that experience and they feel 
that like love and like what we're trying to create here, which sounds so sappy, but it is, it makes a big difference when a community is like this. Um, and, and we're sort of, you know, there's room for all of us in here and, and there's so much talent flowing in. Um, so it's, it's amazing to be able to keep that sort of positivity going. Um, and that piece that you did that we initially connected on, I mean, what a cool piece. And, and I loved, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I've talked about it too much. A couple of times on the stream, I've said, I think I've talked about, I'm obviously from Chicago, not from a very good area of Chicago, grew up with a lot of, you know, poverty and things like that. And having myself and all my friends talk about things like what we wanted to be when we grew up, it was very different than what we actually thought we could be once we hit a certain age and what limitations there were because of how we grew up. Um, and especially for black youth and, and my black male friends, especially like there was a, almost like an age where you sort of realize that you can't reach those things, or at least like they thought that. And it's, it's important what you're doing in your work, um, and how you're giving just so much more thought, not only for the, the, the youth, but also for us and the rest of the world to realize, you know what I mean? Um, so I think it's really, really special what you're doing. I would love to sort of talk, if you want to talk a little bit about your piece on async, um, that's auctioning off tonight and, um, how that, what, it, what, how it got started, um, and what that piece, what that piece is doing. Yeah. I mean, it got started with kind of what you were talking about, like how, um, the, the black males, especially, but the black community especially or people in poverty right um feel like there's limitation on like what they can be because you're in that surrounding so you don't see anything else that resembles where you are at that time right so like imagine like you know we're growing up and we're like in middle school right we don't see anybody else like doing those things that we see on tv right so how do we relate to that um so that's really how it started like um, I grew up with nothing and I achieved my lifelong dream of playing Major League Baseball, right? So I'm just trying to convey, it's hard to with me trying to convey that message. Like, like literally I'm not special, right? At all. Like, yeah. like not, not even like remotely special. Like I just played baseball and I worked really hard and then I achieved my dream. That was it. Like that was the recipe. Like I wanted to be that, I worked really hard and people made sacrifices like you know my parents and other people that paid for me to like stay in a hotel or like took me to games and stuff like people made sacrifice but i worked really hard to get there so like with this work that like it all accumulated when my nephew a few months ago asked if astronauts could be black okay and that's where the astronaut kind of derived from was not like the an astronaut but like the dream that's a simple attainable dream like astronaut not many people become astronauts right but right. at the same time right. not many people become major league baseball players right? right so here this kid is and he saw me play on tv he's been to my games like yet he still felt like there was limitations so how many other kids are out there who aren't that connected to somebody who they can see on TV or are doing these, you know, things that seem like they're so far fetched, feel like there's limitations. So it's okay, there's gotta be so many other kids, right? So I said, okay, I wanna make it work that can illuminate two real subjects who are going through an adverse situation to inspire them. That's how it started. Like I would just wanna inspire them through fine art. I was gonna paint them as subjects, whatever. And then I realized there was more potential here with like the blockchain, with Bitcoin, right? With the ability to create that, like I named it sovereignty because that, that like self-governing authoritative, like I own myself, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it just kept building and building and building. And um, that's how this work became about. Like, I just wanted to inspire these kids. And then when the, uh, 
um, on the day of the shoot, um, we had this astronaut suit and it was a um, very expensive suit, like exact replica. And I gave the kid the helmet and I said, you know, you want to be an astronaut when you grow up? And the kid's seven and uh, he said he's not smart enough to be an astronaut. So it really, really, really hit me even more so because um, he's seven and, and now he feels like there's limitations on what he needs to be. Like he's not smart enough. Like how does he know at seven years old he's not smart enough? Okay, so that's when I realized like we have to give him choices and options, right? And that's kind of how the Bitcoin contribution came about. Because like with Bitcoin, we obviously know that like it's volatile, but at the same time it's scarce, right? Creates that self-governing economy that when he's 18 years old, he can now have options, right? Um, and that's kind of basically on a high level of how it came about. Like, I just wanted to give him options. And a quick story, like when I was um, choosing colleges to play baseball in college, I really wanted to go to Arizona my whole life. And Arizona offered me what they said was one of the highest scholarships they ever offered a position player. And I was like, great, like, I'm going to Arizona, like my lifelong dream. And even though they offered me that high scholarship, we couldn't afford, my family couldn't afford the rest of the remaining tuition. So I didn't go to Arizona. I couldn't go to Arizona. Mm. And to this day, like that, and like my whole career, that always sat with me. Like that's why I always worked so hard. Cause like my parents, like I knew how much that hurt them that they couldn't let me go to Arizona. Right. So I worked tirelessly to ensure that it was okay that I went to Indiana. Right. Like, I'm still gonna make it, you know? And I just wanna make sure that these kids have options and choices when they become 18 that other people have that, you know, they don't have. Like these kids are not growing up without a father, right? Which means the, the, the statistically the cards are stacked against them. So through this work, we are able to provide that opportunity for them um, to have options, choices, you know? Um, and then on a broader perspective, illuminating to the black community or the impoverished community that Bitcoin does provide that ability to um, have that self like governing, like, like ability, you know, that the banking system, the financial system, and like Isaiah talked about it in like Bitcoin in black America, like that the black community can have, you know, that's kind of- yeah. That makes sense a long-winded explanation of it no that's that's the whole i mean i i'm super interested in sort of your inspiration behind that piece and everything that wasn't long-winded at all um and i think you know this what you were talking about at the end that is just so important within itself beyond i mean you're already doing so many important things but that's so important within itself because i can tell you that growing up like I don't know about you, but at least for me, like we didn't know anything. Uh, no, they didn't teach in school about like your finances or about uh. investing. Like that was never a thing. And really, I didn't even learn about it. Didn't even know really what I had no idea what stocks and bonds were until I was taking finance classes in college. And I almost didn't even go to college. So like there was no sort of financial planning or investments or anything like that. Um, so that in itself is also a really interesting um, aspect of this when you're talking about, you know, just giving them the option and, and sort of, you know, setting, setting them up hopefully for success and having these different things that they might not have had otherwise is so special, especially at such a young age to be able to um, lock into those sort of things and just become interested in what that even means. You know what I mean? Because that like doesn't happen at least for kids that young. Um, so that that's interesting within itself. Um, 100%. I just want to make sure questions aren't coming in that we're missing. If you guys have questions, feel free and ask them as well in the chat. Um, so that that that's really beautiful. And and do you want to? we you do have when you release this piece an interesting aspect that people um you set up 
wallets for each of the boys so people can actually donate Bitcoin to them, which is really cool. And then they receive those wallets when they turn 18, um, which is what we were just talking about. So that's also a super cool aspect of this piece as well. Um, and really interesting for folks that I can definitely link in my discord and I'll put it in the YouTube yeah, description definitely. as well. Definitely. That was, uh, that was critical to this is that Bitcoin wallet. Um, obviously now, like they don't know much about it, you know, but you know, um, as they grow up and they, you know, they'll start to learn that, you know, we have options, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. That yeah. Was the um, absolutely. So this piece on async sovereignty and, uh, if you want to share a little bit about, I think it's just so cool about the aspects of the different layers within it and how they'll be updated over time. That would be awesome to hear about. Yeah. So the layers are, well, the main layer is the door, right? Mm -hmm. That's the main focus of the work. Um, and then you also have the two boys. Um, one just turned nine, the other is seven. Um, and then you have the astronaut. And that door, um, upon each boy, upon the oldest brother turning 18, I mean, on the, on, on the oldest brother's birthday, the door opens up slightly each year until it's completely open. And the purpose of that is because when he turns 18, through everybody's contributions, that the hope is that he was able to um, achieve his dreams, right? Like pursue his dreams. So he'll be, they'll be face to face with the astronaut finally, right? After this um, 11 year work. And when he's face to face, become, he turns 18 years old, right? Um, he will then disappear as though he's becoming that astronaut. So mm -hmm. on the 11th year, you'll see the astronaut, the door open, and then the younger, younger brother. And then when the younger brother turns 18, he will disappear as though he became his dream, like he's pursuing his dream. So what's left there um, for throughout the Ethereum blockchain is these, the astronaut and the door, and there's this empty space, right? Like, and it's symbolizing that, you know, through our work and our, our efforts, like we help them pursue their dreams. Wow. I love that. I love the the imagery, the whole like the actual real story behind it and and how that's going to look over the years is really just amazing, like and impactful for sure, especially as they're growing up and sort of having this sort of reminder and, and looking on the piece um, and having that door slowly open is just such a cool, such a cool thing. That, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I just, I just love, I love the, the idea behind that. And, and one thing that's really cool um, is that this work as well, and this is through, like I said, there's all so many people working on this work from all angles, um, is that it will be featured on a digital billboard in Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. one element that's really cool about this work is that Um, we'll be able to control the state of the astronaut. The astronaut has three states. Um, right now, he's in state one with the helmet on. State two is the helmet's coming off. State three is the helmet's completely off to reveal the astronaut, right? So the importance of that beyond the significance of the work on, a, um, on the level we've been speaking on, more artistic level is that, and technologically level, is this we're proving true ownership over a digital a digital um, work, right? So now it's gonna be on display on the digital billboard and the, and the master owner will be able to, to dictate the state mm -hmm. of the astronaut on this billboard. So this billboard is like in the smack dag middle of Los Angeles. That's amazing. Yeah, so um, I, for me, like it's, it's cool, but like I'm more about like the team winning. So like it's really big for me for async, right? Like async's doing tremendous work so async is going to be on full display in los angeles right like showing the capabilities of the blockchain ownership and in their whole uh, programmable 
art, right? Like it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of cool things happening with this work. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, everyone that watches the show knows, um, I, I love async and what they're doing and bringing to art and, and how they're combining the tech with everything and such a cool piece to kind of, um, like you said, literally be on display to show the world what's happening and how cool for whoever does own this piece to be able to update it and see that change um, on a billboard. Like that's, it's nuts. It's so cool to think that wherever they are in the world, they can interact with this piece, which is interacting with you, interacting with the kids, interacting, you know, with so many different and on so many different levels um with this piece and this piece is like obviously you put so much heart into this piece so it's such a personal piece um and to have someone who truly like um connects with that and that can control it in some way obviously within limitations is is just really cool um yeah. so i can't wait to see that yeah, and I think it's just the beginning. Like, it, it, like I oh, said, yeah. like the space, space moves so quickly, right? So, like, it takes one person to, to do this, and then, then okay, then here comes this person, this person, this person, right? So, I think it's just the beginning. And like, like, yeah, like async is for me, like, right now, the end all be all, right? Like, they're they're the future, of really, in my opinion, like bridging that, like, okay, like that whole every, all the worlds together, right? Like, they have an amazing team, like a great, like vision for the future like long play here um and it was like amazing working with them for this work right like it it made it made total sense from the beginning to them and like worked really really hard to get this accomplished and it was like it, it for whatever reason it worked, it worked perfect it worked perfectly like from the yeah. shoot to like programming it like <laughs> that's that's rare when you're doing something like this <laughs> async in the chat just to said oh with a heart and they also said um it's so it this is such a powerful use of async artwork to actually impact real life kids truly deserving um and also gt in the comments said um micah the story behind your sovereignty artwork is amazing i worked in australian indigenous communities for two years helped build an art gallery uh your story really rings true with our local indigenous kids and even adults um I'm working with a local indigenous artist, Robert Michael Young, with his Sovereign T t-shirt artwork oh, to help dope. young indigenous kids in Melbourne learn to create and build businesses, et cetera. That's so That's really, cool. Yeah. That is so awesome. Yeah, it resonates worldwide. Like, there's always an oppressed group worldwide, right? Like, there's always oh, a group yeah. of uh, cards just stacked against them, right? Yeah. Um, cool. Thank you for sharing that, too, GT. Um, I, you know... It's kind of interesting to have something that um, is this special, make a big wave like this. And I guess I would love to know your perspective, I guess, when you started creating art and, and how you were talking about with baseball, how you're like, I'm going to be a baseball player. That is my dream. That's going to happen. And you just like stuck with that for so long. When you started your journey in art, did you feel like I am going to be a successful artist? Did you just, did you speak that to sort of like fruition? Like, did you, I, yeah, I guess, I guess that's my question. Did you just have that determination that nothing was going to happen besides becoming like a successful artist? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, only because, uh, I know my work, my work level, like I mm -hmm. work not. And when I played baseball, I wasn't the most talented kid ever. Like I was always, there's always somebody better than me. Even in literally high school, whatever it was, like there was always somebody better than me. But I think what separated me at the end was I just worked nonstop. Yeah. And like, even when I was in the major leagues, um, game would be at seven o'clock, right? Or six or five, whatever it was in Chicago, right? Um, and I would be there at 12 and I'd be on the field at 12 taking ground balls with Robin Ventura, Joe McEwing every single day. So seven hours before the game, I was out there, they were out there and I was working. Like, so i will go in, eat lunch, hit again, ground balls again and batting practice, all that. So like 
there's seven hours of work before I even play the game. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I knew I'd be successful at whatever it was I wanted to do just because not because I'm talented by any means, just because I work and I'm, and I, and I know that if you work, you're going to get that result and it may not be immediately, maybe a couple of years, five years, whoever knows, but just work and just put your head down and just work. And that's just what I like to do. I don't care about the results. I don't, I just like to work. So like when it came to art, like even now, like today I'm in the studio at 6 a.m. And last night I'm working on a project, so I'm up till like midnight, right? So it's like, I'm usually in the studio about 5, 36 in the morning just because I like work. Like, and I think it takes work to get to a level. So, um, yeah, I spoke into fruition, but at the same time, I, just, I work it into fruition too. <laughs> oh yeah, no, for sure. I, I 100% connect with that. I literally, I mean, I did really well in school, like in college, but it definitely wasn't because I was the smartest. It was because I was spending six times longer than anyone in the library nonstop, like after working my full-time job and like I was, I had to put in more work than anyone because I didn't like have it naturally. So I totally yeah. know what you mean by that. And I love that. And I, I absolutely respect it for sure. Um, D Walton asked, what strategies do you use to get your artwork seen by more people? Um, strategies. I, I'm not the right person to ask. Cause I don't, I don't do social media. Well, like you do social media. Well, right. Like, uh. You do I, social I struggle with it but you're scarce enough to, you're scarce enough and like you know mysterious enough to make social media work for you um I don't... Uh, right like i've every single work i've like really done i, I put out uh even like in the beginning when i was doing bad work i just put it out um and eventually like people's, you know, and I don't worry about how many likes it gets or retweets it gets or none of that. I just put it out and you get feedback and, you know, um, just keep it rolling, you know? Yeah. No, um, I totally agree with that. Yeah. And at the same time, I also understand that I had a unique platform coming into the art world. Like you're coming from major league baseball. So you kind of have like a little advantage of people wanting to showcase your work. Right. Um, and so I had a little leg up, but like, so I don't, I can't speak on what it's like to just be an artist and just become going to go into the art world. I don't take it for granted, but at the same time, I work my ass off to be a baseball player to get to that level. So right. um, I, I'm not the right person. Like, like, I don't know what it takes to get your work seen if you're just an artist, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'll jump in a little bit there. I mean, I literally only got social media when I decided to start creating crypto art like create art based on crypto in 2017 that's the first time I'd ever had an Instagram I never had a Facebook anything before that so like I honestly don't really like social media but when you plug into a specific community and you sort of find your niche and to be honest just connecting with other people within that community and finding a little bit of a support system um, that totally helps like even with, for me, like getting into NFTs, my first community was crypto voxels. Like yeah. everyone chatting in crypto voxels, like, and I was fortunate to go to conferences and actually meet some of the folks in person, but that was like my little community. And that, you know, turned into getting to know more and more people. So just interacting with folks and, and putting yourself out there um, and and all that um, hopefully will will be able to you know, be, get more connections and, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, find your crowd. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. Nice. GT said uh, works with artists every day and uh, is introducing them into the digital realm, one artist at a time. Um, cool. Let me just make sure I'm not missing another question. Oh, you say too much on Twitter, Lander. <laughs> no, I think you've got it right. Who says too much? Lander says, I say too much on Twitter, LOL. Oh. Um, cool, cool. Um, so, sorry, I was just making sure we didn't miss any questions that come in. Feel free and keep dropping questions if you guys have them down there. Um, what are you, what are you, with this piece, 
and with other pieces that you're working on, like, are you, they, a lot of them have a theme for sure. And like, uh, the imagery of youth and like this, which, which is really beautiful in my opinion. Um, what, like, do you see yourself creating, um, more and more pieces like this and getting more and more youth involved with it? Do you have like other plans for a different series as well? Like what are you sort of thinking for the rest of 2020 and, and 2021 coming up? Um, are you going, are you kind of going for? Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I've been planning something very, um, extravagant coming up. Um, but it's all centered around these youth. Like mm -hmm. photography for me is not my thing, but at the same time, um, it conveys a very powerful message. So I'm going to continue to do these on a very scarce level, um, just because of the time that it, like, it takes to do something like this, like this is months. And um, I still really enjoy painting. Um, so just continue to refine my skills, you know, as it is as an artist, continue to refine your skills, your style. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the astronaut theme is that's going to be, you know, cohesive throughout. Um, and um, I mean, one thing we're working on right now is um, helping to tell stories through art. So uh, I've been telling some stories of some like, you know, athletes and prominent figures through my art. You know, they tell me a story. I created it in artwork. So um, just uh helping people you know realize that those, those the top is the highest level you know they're normal people it's helping people achieve their dream that's, that's it that's, that's all i'm on yeah that's beautiful. i'm on that way and, and, and there's nothing like too complicated about it <laughs> like yeah if everybody's winning we all win it you know <laughs> um no i i definitely agree with that um blockchain gaming network asked what is your art workflow software um or anything like that art workflow um so for paintings um and like my physical works uh, other than photography it is a lot of fuck ups like that's it <laughs> that's like, how it goes right yeah like i work so freely and so just so like i'll go in the studio and i'll um roll out a canvas and uh, work and work tomorrow I'll come in and work again if it doesn't work out I just throw it away like so I just work and I always work on I always work on the biggest scale um, so if I want to do a seven foot by five foot painting that's the scale I work on and if I mess it up I just throw it away and I bring out another seven foot by five because in my theory is if it if it clicks if it works then it, then it, and it's gonna be great, right? I'm not gonna, I can't do like, you know, like I'm gonna sketch it out and like plan it out and then put it on. Like, I just go with the feeling I'm in. So like, I work on the biggest scale and I, I, I have a good deal on some canvases. So like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like as cheap as paper for me. So like, no big deal to just crumble up a seven by seven foot by five foot painting and just let's ride again. <laughs> wow, what, what kind of paints do you use? Someone just asked. Yeah, so uh been transitioning to oil. Um, okay. One of my big influences is, is Trevor Jones, and like you know, we, we communicate on a very regular basis just because of um, I I admire that oil, right? Like I admire that the vibrance of it, and with my mark making, um, trying to be loose, you know. So I've been going to oil um, early on. I was acrylic, like gouache. But then I realized, like, like I can't do what you do with like straight lines and like, like in like smooth lines. Like that's not me. Like I, I and so I just rock with the oil. Um, right now I'm rolling with some Windsor. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what that's what I'm rolling with right now. And then when you um are animating the pieces so you obviously photograph the pieces and are you using like after effects to do your animations yeah strictly after effects um I'm, I'm getting away from that a little bit now though because it's not my forte um and i want to ensure what i'm putting out is going to move this space forward 
and it's going to be cohesive with whatever I'm doing in the physical paintings. You know what I mean? Um, it's not it's not my forte, so I'm just trying to move this space forward and like like what you're doing and like whatever. I'm trying to just keep up the par, so like you know, I'm not dragging this face down with you know me trying to animate. I, I'm not. It's not my skill set. Yeah, no, that's fair. And also, I mean, you're you're being very humble. You're not. You definitely aren't a bad animator. I saw some of your stuff and it looked really great. So <laughs> that's like weeks of work, though. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. It, I mean, it's a lot of work to animate. It's it's not an easy task, especially when you're taking a physical piece and like trying to re, you know, you paint a shape on top of a shape and trying to recreate that part of the yeah. face back there, like digitally. And doing all this sort of crazy stuff. So, um, oh, Blockchain Gaming also asked, what, uh, how long did um, your longest piece ever take you? I guess that's um, a good question. So I did, I did an exhibit. Um, I did an exhibit in um, Atlanta when I was playing with the Braves, and it was at the Woodruff Art Center, um, and. <laughs> I mean, I was playing at the time, so like, I would come home after the game and like work. Uh, I mean, like, it took me like two months. Um, I did it was all in oil, like, um, like, uh, like two months. If I'm good now. Like, if I'm in the zone, I just go in the zone. I'll work like you know twenty hours straight. I come tomorrow and work twenty hours straight, so like forty hours. I'm I, I think in hours, not days, because I work long days. I guess. Yeah. I mean, this work, I mean, this work, this async work took, took, I want to say five to six months worth of work. Wow. Like, you know, I know it seems like it, when you look at it, it's such a simple thing, but no, like, it's just not, it's not. Like, oh, yeah, no. Coordinating even a door and... stand up by itself yeah. <laughs> and move on axis, like, it's not. Yeah. Not easy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that's awesome. By the way, we're it's crazy because we are at 11 48 eastern time right now damn already yeah anybody check the biz i know i we have async in the chat so um you guys are gonna have to give us updates when when things are going on here oh, oh, um, so this, oh i just checked it right now it's saying it's, it's right there 250 holding strong that's so crazy so do you want to tell everyone what the bidding is at right now i guess usd and eth terms yeah, right now it said, uh, right now it's at 250 E, which is equivalent of $118,000. So crazy. So amazing. Uh, with 10 minutes left to go. I mean, that's a strong bid. Oh, yeah. You're not, <laughs> a very yeah. strong bid. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see much out of that. Uh, um, Blockchain Gaming Network. Feel free and check the the link. Um, I have a link to the sovereignty sort of blog discussing the artwork, and then you can find the link to the um, async uh, art piece as well. That's what we're talking about. They just asked yeah. bidding bidding for what, but yep, it's in the description. Um, what skills gained from baseball do you find yourself applying to art? Tommy Wilson asked. Failure is the only thing I apply. Like being okay to fail, like what you talked about, like throwing away that seven foot by five foot canvas, mm. like, just, like literally taking it off the wall and throwing it away. And it could, be, you know, like you fail in baseball so much. So, breathing, you know, just to like, I want everything to be perfect. I want everything to be like executed flawlessly. So, like, I'm okay to fail because I only want my best stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's a good lesson for sure. That's one of the hardest lessons, but one of the most important. Yeah. Um, what that one? So someone asked, uh, D. Walton asked, what platform would you suggest to get started with crypto art for a complete newbie? That's a little bit tough. Some crypto crypto art yeah. or NFT art platforms require you to apply, and then they'll get back to you. Um, there are some that you can just totally make your own contract and go go free with that. Um, I'll hopefully do a video soon um, talking more about that that I can answer answer later. So stay tuned for that sort of thing. Um, GT asked, which artist, crypto or not, 
would you like to collaborate with? Hmm. Probably more of a musician, right? Because that would I mean, be cool. Yeah, like um, you, you, your work is so clean. Like, and the, the people I came up on um, and I worked under for like a long time was um, they were pop artists out of Los Angeles, right? Shelby and Sandy. And they did the same thing, like clean lines and all this. Um, it's just not, it's just not me. I, I get your whole work dirty, right? So like, I can't, I, don't know about that. I can't collaborate with like other artists because like I'd, I'd get their work dirty. <laughs> no, but it, it is a cool, is it interesting? Like collaborations are such an interesting thing because there has to be not only a connection in the workflow and meaning and like, the whole idea behind the piece but there's like so much more to it than that um and matching the styles and collaborations are actually pretty hard um to do and to find the perfect you know song and dance with each other to make that happen but i really love the idea of collaborating with a musician that's really unique because there's it's possible with nfts to have audio and have that link to it. So that's a really interesting idea. And not only that, you can do so much with, with audio where you can change it depending on different things and and you can do all all sorts of things. So I, I like that idea for sure. So one thing I forgot about, um, the whale community came through big time on the crypto birthday. Uh, oh, sweet. On Bitcoin birthday. And I told them I would pick out from the contributors to the Bitcoin birthday, a name. Oh, amazing. I think uh, Async might have just mentioned that. Um, are we revealing who who won the a, the whale promo on this live yep. stream? Got Sweet. it. Got them chopped up here. Okay. I'm going to put them in an envelope so people see it's legit. <laughs> so what is this promo? Remind, tell, tell me what is the, uh, oh, so, who wins... So 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 they win the gold version of like the um the uh, the uh, sovereignty work right okay an nft that the air dropped to them we'll communicate with them afterwards to get their oh, email cool. as well. things were contributed um i'm not too tech savvy in that but uh i'll pick a name people go see i'm not cheating all right i believe you i can see you fumbling around in there C S K Y. C S K Y. C S K Y. All right. You are a very lucky person. That is awesome. We'll have uh, Asyncs in the chat, so we'll have them um, let the community know. That's really cool. That's yeah. really awesome. So, what? Um... Oh, yeah. Perfect. They got that. They just got that info. They did? Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we'll link up with him. I mean, I mean, the whale community obviously is always online. So like, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Always doing something like playing poker, watching games, like oh, watching Discord always. streams, live art, like always something going on there, That's which is bleak, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's, it's crazy. And I mean, the cool thing also about this community is that it is so international. So like yeah. there's Everybody always up somewhere, someone up somewhere. Like GT, aren't you in Australia? What time is it there? Because you were on my stream this morning too. So you're just a madman. Madman. Got back <laughs> through his eyes right now. Yeah. Um, I'm Water pretty sure. Sweet. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's awesome. Congrats to CSKY. That's pretty sick. You're a lucky, lucky person. Um, we got we got five minutes to go. Let I know. See. That's crazy. This, I mean. What an amazing, for for those of you who are watching, at this moment, that um, sets a record in U.S. dollar terms for uh, um, an NFT piece. So that's pretty crazy for a single NFT piece that um, you you broke a record, which is so crazy. One thing I do have to say about that, one thing that was really important to me uh, was to do this in um, photography because photography has been is obviously a digital um, medium and 
you when you look at the painting price points and the price points of like the highest you know usd of like a painting like a bass scout or whatever in, in photography it never gets to like the respect it deserves because of um i think a lot of it has to do with that authenticity and like true like ownership of that work right that image right so um i did a photography to show the use case for blockchain for you know other photographers to understand that like you know if you this is the future for you know you guys right like there's people who have been taking you know content creators you know videographers all that like this blockchain provides you that authenticity to you where like true ownership of your image and that's like literally why i did it in photography like, yeah strictly why that's that's beautiful and i just the the way you know what you just explained and the way that you were able to capture this like full scene even the coloring of the piece or of the photo and and everything i mean it's just brilliant the way you did it and and i think it was it was it, it was done perfectly absolutely perfectly um, a lot. i'm gonna make sure someone's asking about the link we'll we'll send it send it over now the link about the about the artwork is in my in my youtube description but i'll send also the link um so you guys can watch this bid live with us yeah and then, and then once the once it's transferred here in three minutes um there will that that the master owner who also owns the layer will be able to control um the um the state of the astronaut so he could reveal the astronaut if he chooses um, yeah i really can't wait to see that happen if she chooses and then um <laughs> yeah i mean the, the, what's really important about this work is it's 11 years right and Absolutely. responsibility falls on the master owner to ensure that the the attention continues on it for 11 years right because we can't just like forget about it and a year like obviously this space moves fast but like we can't forget about this we can't forget about these kids and like their future here so the onus really falls on me it's a lot of responsibility when you own this work yeah absolutely and they um also async if you don't mind linking that i don't know why my computer's being a little funny if you could link the actual bid page that would be awesome so we can um everyone in the chat can can watch in with us um but I also, huge shout out to, you know, right now it's 10.59, so we have another minute to see what comes in, but a huge shout out also to the folks that came before this bid, because there there was a lot of heavy hitting bids um, along the way, and, and just showing, I mean, a few different community members who are able to bid that crazy and, and show their appreciation for this work and what it means for them is really, uh, beautiful to see yeah i mean um, we got a minute so it's like it's, it's humbling it really is but, I mean, this is crazy Dude, yeah this it's, is... Pre it's pretty wild like it's it's, it's truly uh it truly is humbling like, i mean oh i mean this is like it's it's nuts. I mean, it's really cool uh, that I mean, USD wise, this is setting a record, and and what an important piece to to have a record set with, right? Yeah, like it's a testament to async. It's a testament to everybody involved, PR, all that. Like it's to ensure that it gets out there, that the message gets out. Yep. There, like this, and then it's right now it's midnight around. I'll share my screen. Let me share my screen. Everybody can see it. Uh, yep. I think. Wait, let me make sure. Oh. The way is that gas? I make sure it goes through. Here we go. All okay. right. So you right now for those of you that don't know. Are, are you still, uh, or did you stop sharing the screen? Oh, I just did. Oh, okay. You just accepted the bid, right? I just accepted it, yeah. Okay, sweet. You guys just saw uh, Mike just accept the bid. We set the record. 
That's crazy. Dude, congrats. Congrats to like everyone involved in this. And what, what an amazing, beautiful way to sort of just not even close this piece. Like there's literally, this is a seven year long piece, which is, or even longer than that. How many, how many years? 11. 11, 11 years um, long piece. And you, you know, just did the first sort of action for it i mean not first but you sold it which is beautiful but now also the updates that we're going to be seeing i can't wait to see if the owner will change the state that would be pretty epic yeah like yeah <laughs> like i can't and i think they have I think, I think they have a bot now that like can show you like layer updates sorry about that guys i just did something funny with my screen I think we're all good now. Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, congratulations, dude. This is so crazy. That's so, it's just so amazing uh, to to be on. I'm glad, thank you for, for allowing this to be on my show that you accepting that, that bid. At that I wouldn't price. have to be any, any other place. Thank you, thank you. Um, like for real, like it was like a, Everyone's saying congratulations, congrats, mate. Woo! All these con uh, congrats, happy for you. Matt Kane, Async, DT, um, D. Walton, Rosemary Lynch. Put it in, and, and, and also I gotta add, add it to your Google calendars now, August 10th and November 6th. Just put Bitcoin birthday. Yeah. Just add it to your calendars. Just forever. Like, I don't know how you all can add it to your calendars, but like, just add it to your calendars. And let's just. Yeah. So you can no, remind def every year. Definitely. Absolutely add it. The congrats are coming in the chat. So I Hell just yeah. love seeing all of this. This is so cool. Kelper McKelp, AG Digi, Bivon, Barton. You guys are awesome. Um, and shout out to, I got to shout out to uh, Metaphors too, because Metaphors wrote an incredible article about this. Yeah. Like, like an incredible article like like i've done countless interviews good games bad games throughout my like life and like this was one of the most incredible articles and like interviews and like interaction i've ever had like like for real like sincerely one of the most like like i i hung up that off the interview and i was like man that was like incredibly like moving yeah so, shout out metaphors too like that was like Metaverse is continues. I mean, such a cool duo they are, and and what? they, I mean, are just such awesome. I got to meet at least or one half of of Metaverse, and uh, I really enjoyed enjoyed meeting them. And and I'm I'm always amazed by how cool they are. Yeah, like like everybody involved. Like a lot of this was done. Like obviously, like just communicating and all that, and like. Yeah, no, absolutely. Everyone's saying congrats and awesome to hear everything behind that piece. Um, thank you. I mean, thank you guys for even being on here and watching this go. Uh, you accept the bid live with us. That's so amazing. Um, I would love to, if you're up for it, um, I do these little questions at the end uh, that just help everyone get to know you a little bit more um, yep. if you want to do those. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, a skill that you wish you had? Singing. Singing. That's a good one. Someone said that a couple days ago. I think it was nah. Paradism. Sing. That's a good one. Um, your favorite animal? Monkey. A monkey? Yeah, they, they, they all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you had to only watch one movie for the rest of your life, what would it be? Pineapple Express. Oh, that's a good one. Can or good Friday. Laugh? Pineapple Express or Friday. One of, one of the, either one. Okay. Um, if uh, your favorite place on earth, near or far? Halstead, Austria. Austria? Yeah, Halstead, Austria. It's a small okay. town. It's what inspired the movie Frozen. It's like. Uh, oh, no way. Yeah, it's like a, a remote village in, in, in Austria. Um, okay. And, uh, it's incredible. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, what was cool when you were young, but is not cool now? 
Um, cool when you're young that's not cool now. And that's a damn good question. Yeah, some people say, like, someone said, like, corduroys were cool. Or, like, when I was young, we used to, like, give each other, like, gel pen tattoos at recess. Or, I don't know, like, Walkmans. What was cool? What was cool in that when I was young that's not cool now? Um, I think it, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I it doesn't really it's change. It's a weird question. It's a weird question for sure. AIM? Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, that's, that was, that's that door opening, not cool that door now. Opening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's definitely not cool now. Oh, by the way, GT said he's buzzing from the sale. Never Hell been so yeah. pumped. That's awesome. Hell yeah. that's, that's love, GT. Um, would you uh, would you want to live forever? No, 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 because um, no. Like I, I grew up a Christian. I believe in heaven, so like I, <laughs> I believe that is way better than here. So like, All right, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. All right. Um, and then the last two are NFT related. Sorry, one second. Um, what is, what is your single favorite NFT that you own? That I own. I don't. I, I haven't collected many. Uh... Okay. Or favorite NFT out there. How about that? I like what you did with AC. I like, I like, I like your work period straight up. Like, thank you. From a fine art perspective. I, I like your work. Thank you. Like I appreciate lot. that. You're probably envious of it. Um, favorite NFT. I like, you know what? I, I, I like what NBA Top Shot is doing. Um, I like what they have packaged. Like, I like, yeah. like that, that whole experience. All right. That's a good one. And, and it also, it's kind of interesting because you come from that world and to see, um, to see the way that they're displaying like such important aspects of, of, you know, athletes careers, but then also for the owner and the viewer, like remembering that crazy thing that the basketball player did or something like that. Yeah, it's I really like cool. What, I like what they're doing. I also like what, what the, mu the, the music direction is going. I like what yeah. they're doing. A lot of like what I'm seeing. I spoke to a DJ today, actually. Yeah. So I think that that's the way. That's awesome. Um, and then last question: If you could have one NFT that you wanted for free, anyone, which would it be? Mm. Yeah, I want that Matt Cain man. He got that uh, a little model in there. He can sell some things and. Yeah, I want that Matt Cain, that, yeah. that Bitcoin volatility. Yeah, that would, <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I'd love that piece. What a, what yeah. an epic, like, that, yeah. I mean, that's a good, that's a good choice. That's a good choice for sure. Um, it's like, it's visually beautiful. It's technically stunning. And it has, like, so many different aspects to it that are just, were game changing and i'm sure we're going to see more and more people adopt a lot of these like mechanisms that he yeah. put out there um so cool such a cool yeah. piece yeah he turns that right there absolutely um oh yeah amazing oh well, who wouldn't want a piece of matt kane in all caps no that's very true <laughs> um this was awesome micah thank you so much for coming on here congrats like huge huge congrats on just everything you're doing in the space and your art um and how you're connecting to people collectors but then also um to your heart and and youth and the whole message behind your work um i really really appreciate it and i know a lot of other folks do too and congrats on just finding um, this space and yourself and art and and everything. I, I'm super excited to have you on the show and just learn more about your journey and what you're doing. No, thank you. I, I guess that.
huge fan, obviously. So like, this is like, I've seen that background and being there. Like, yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you, thank you. Well, I, I oh, go ahead. Like, like, the legend. So like, <laughs> this is like truly. I don't know about that, but. Yeah, no, for real. So this is like, um, you're like the Wizard of Oz, you know? You're like you, scares just enough. It's like everybody knows what you're what you're up to. So like, it's cool to be on here, man. For real. Thank you. Thank you. I grew up watching that movie, so it's a yeah. funny, funny connection. Um, this is this is awesome. Well, I will, everyone in the chat, thank you so much for hopping on here. You guys know I appreciate this so much, um, just showing up and 